Hello fellow YouTubers, in this video I'll be doing an unboxing overview and a quick review of AMD Radeon HD 5450 graphics card by Sapphire. My test subject today will be Core 2 Duo system from Lenovo. Uh, this is a ThinkCenter A58 PC where I will install this um, GPU and I will run a few benchmarks. Um, if this video sounds familiar, um, it is. I have done similar project on this PC in the past uh, that can be viewed here. Um, and for details of the system, you can check the video description down below. As you, uh, as you may have noticed, um, the hardware mentioned is quite outdated. The reason I decided to make this video is because some of you might be running an older machine and uh, you might require HDMI or DVI interfaces that your machine might not have, um, like in case of this Lenovo PC. Or you may be simply wanting to offload the workload of your CPU and make your machine run faster during video playback and other GPU intensive tasks. Um, and obviously most importantly, all this while keeping your current power supply unit and staying on tight budget. Um, this video will be segmented into four parts. First, I will show you around the box. Next, I will go through the contents of the package, followed by installation into PC I mentioned. And I will also run a benchmark uh, tool or two to show you some results along with power usage figures. So let's get started. I've got my hands on AMD Radeon HD 5450 by Sapphire. These guys also make um, other graphics cards, motherboards, mini PC, CPU coolers, workstation products, also including AMD Fire Pro series, professional GPUs, and other high tech uh, stuff. First things first, here is the box. Um, on the front, we can see some details about the graphics card, including its name, Radeon HD 5450, graphics, RAM type and size, um, DDR3 1 gigabyte. Um, you can also get this card in DDR2 flavor along with 512 and 2 gigabyte version of uh, VRAM. Some information about the technology, MD stream processing, HDMI output, crossfire support and 40 nanometer fabrication process. Also formats such as DirectX 11 and PCI Express 2.1. Note, this GPU will also run on the version 1.1 of PCI Express 16x port, so it is backwards compatible. Last but not least, um, nice and shiny sticker reminds us of the most important bit, LP bracket included. LP here stands for low profile, meaning you can install this GPU into most PC cases, starting with uh, micro ATX to full size ATX. I will talk more about this uh, later in the video. Um, top, bottom and left side of the box is pretty plain, uh, while right reveals some PC requirements, minimum PC requirements. I uh, probably can't see it properly in the video, so I'm going to go through them from top to bottom. So um, PCI Express 16x graphics slot, 400 watt power supply um, is recommended but not required. Note that this graphics card is powered off PCI Express slot alone, hence no 6-pin power connector um, is required. Hence, as long as you have a decent PSU, in my case it's uh, around 280 watts, you're good to go. I will be measuring power usage later on so you could see this um, in action. Um, it also requires one gigabyte of system RAM and uh, for Crossfire second um, AMD HD5450 GPU along with obviously supported motherboard. I would highly recommend you guys not to do this. If you need more power, simply invest into more powerful graphics cards, as uh, simple as that. Our um, OS supported um, Windows 7, Vista, XP and Media Center Edition 2005. And outputs, once again, HDMI, um, VGA or DSOP and DVI. And um, the back of the box, 
um, recaps most of the things I have mentioned, plus gives you some nice reading. Um, you can pause the video here, I don't know if you guys can see it, um, but you can pause it here and go through that and have some quality time. Next, I will check what is included in the box. To save some time, I've already taken everything out. Let's start with the least important items, manual CD and such. As always, to max out performance of this uh, product, I would highly recommend you to download the latest drivers from AMD and install it on the day of installation. Only recommend you um, to use this CD if you are stuck and only temporarily until you can get the up-to-date drivers for the best performance. Um, next, you would get the low profile brackets um, as mentioned in box overview um, these are very handy and in some cases required if you have small um, form factor pc for instance as you can see um, there are two of them one attaches directly to the card um, and uh, another one attaches to the card via the D sub cable. As you see, the one that attaches to the card has uh, DVI and HDMI output already. Uh, it is entirely up to you. You do not need to use the VGA connection um, if these two ports are enough for you. And um, there is a graphics card itself. So um, here's the graphics card. As you see, um, via full profile bracket, you can use three outputs right off the box. Um, the card has a single slot design and uses passive cooling method. About that, um, it does not mean that you do not need to cool the card. Um, so make sure you provide enough air airflow in your case to ensure that the card is running cool. And here's a, I'll show you close-up shots of the card. Here's the front of the card. And also the back of the card. And here are the outputs that I mentioned before. So next I will show you a simple installation guide and I will go straight to the benchmarks. Once again, here's my candidate, Lenovo A58. I have it free of any cables. To install the card, you simply need to open the case. To do that, I will undo two screws on the back of the panel. And once it's done, I would press this button to slide it open. Um, make sure you keep all the parts safe. So place it somewhere so you wouldn't lose anything. Um, this procedure might be different and probably is different on other cases. Um, so you just have to follow the steps required for your machine. Um, now, here's an important part. Ensure that you're properly grounded before you do any maintenance or upgrades on PC or simply do it at your own risk, uh, which I do not recommend. Now, I'm using this grounding strap that I will be attaching it to the extension leads that goes into mains. and. Uh, I will be using the grounding socket on the extension lead to make sure everything's done. First, um, I'm going to touch various parts of the PC to ensure that um, the case on myself has the static charge equalized. Um, do not proceed, my recommendation is do not proceed anywhere further if you're not sure what I'm talking about. First, make sure that there are no cables or other hardware in your way and remove the, these pieces covering the any back slots if there are any covering. And uh, then take the card by the sides and uh, lower it into PCI Express 16X slot, which should look like so. It's a black slot, um, about the size of the standard PCI. So now my case uh, uses a tool-free axis.
So if your PC has a tool free access, good and well. If it does not, make sure that you secure the card with a screw around here on the back of the card. Now screws uh, like that usually comes um, in a case build. So if you build the, case, the PC yourself, that's where you should have it. And obviously I would be just simply closing that against the card and my card is now secure. Um, now that the card is installed, you have to put the case cover back and tighten back the screws. And the graphics card is now installed, the case is closed and PC is ready to be powered up. Just a quick recommendation, um, if you haven't set anything in your BIOS just yet, connect um, the cable to one of the dedicated ports on your motherboard and another cable to the uh, whichever one port you choose to on the graphics card that you install. This way you ensure that when you switch on the PC you can switch between two ports and basically ensure that you can set the BIOS without unplugging the cable and plugging it back somewhere else. Anyway, I'm gonna skip that part of the video. I'm gonna go straight to Windows environment for some tests. And here I am in Windows 7 Professional 32-bit edition operating system. I've already installed all the necessary software, which is MD Catalyst Suite Revision 13.4 and the current 3D Mark. You can see them running on the screen. And also here's a close-up screenshot of both. I've also taken the reading of the idle wattage. As you can clearly see, most power supplies will handle this type of load without any issues. And I'll show you another um, shot of the wattage that was taken during the benchmark just in a few minutes. Um, before I show you 3D Mark results, I actually did run all the, uh, all the tests already. This is the current Windows experience reading. So as you see on the screen, and now I'm going to switch back to the experience reading that I had before I did any benchmarks. And as you see, there is a good bit of improvement there. Now, once again, it would not be a valid comparison tool, but it is free and it's available on most Windows operating systems. Right, back to the synthetic benchmarks. Um, so I use the standard uh, settings on the graphics drivers and on the 3D benchmark, and the results are as follows. Now, this is a peak reading, which once again proves that just about any decent PSU well below the recommended wattage would be up for the tasks. Also, most case, in most cases, you would not even pick the card and CPU together, especially if you use this card for what it is built for, home theater PC. Once again, if you wish to see what a decent card would do in this type of machine and what sort of wattage you'd be looking at, you can click on the link here and you'll be forwarded to my last video that I've done with this machine. So yeah, nothing surprising here. Results are below average compared to modern system at best. The main point here, however, is that not the actual result, but the fact that the card ran all the tests successfully, where your integrated Intel card would probably not run all the tests in the first place. And this is one of the many benefits having dedicated GPU. It's a hardware acceleration in both 2D and 3D. Obviously, also doing this benchmark um, gave me a chance to test out the peak load anyway. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up my quick review, overview and installation guide. Now obviously the biggest advantage is 3D and 2D acceleration and that you can use more outputs for your video and you can use HDMI for video and audio which would be both in digital format. Should you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section down below and don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more videos to come. Have a nice day.